So I'll go ahead and hand it over to Dan, who is our speaker today. Um, he is a CPA that is dedicated to the majority of his career to nonprofits because he believes deeply in the power of people to impact their communities. His expertise includes grant accounting, month end closings, and the creation and interpretation of financial reports. When he is not serving his clients, he enjoys spending time with his daughter. Um, so please welcome today's speaker, Dan Trich. Well, Steen, before you go on mute, can you see my screen? Does everything look okay? Yes, it looks okay. okay. Yep. Great. You're perfect. Um, well, thank you for that nice introduction. Um, as Faustine mentioned, my name is Dan Trich. I'm the market leader and manager for the Phoenix office of Your Part-Time Controller, YPTC for short. Um, Your Part-Time Controller, we are accountants, controllers, and CFOs primarily for nonprofits. For those of you who logged on a little bit early, I did mention that we do have about 5% that are for-profits as well, but we really do focus on the nonprofit um, sphere. If you are a for-profit who has logged in here, don't worry, all of this information is going to be valuable to you as well. Um, we've been in existence for over 25 years, 27 to be exact. We have 650 clients in all nonprofit sectors many of them small, but we have some larger ones as well, and they are nationwide. We have 215 experienced professionals, and we are serving nonprofits anywhere. We have physical offices in Philadelphia, DC, New York, Central Jersey, Houston, Phoenix, and Boston, um, but um, we uh, also have a robust remote, um, remote practice as well. So that's kind of one of the reasons we decided to do a webinar on QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online, because we feel very passionately about the power of moving your accounting department to the cloud. If you want more information on us, you can visit us at yptc.com. All right. So without further ado, our topic today, QuickBooks Desktop Conversion to QuickBooks Online. Our learning objectives. We are going to prepare for a conversion from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. We're gonna to convert to QuickBooks Online from QuickBooks Desktop in eight steps. And then finally, we're gonna complete some post-conversion steps. And one thing um, I wanna mention here is that um, at the end of this presentation, I'll, I will forward this to Faustine, both the slides, and then we also have some helpful checklists that really outline these steps in a very brief format for you so that when you're going through the process, you can use these checklists to make this uh, conversion a little bit less daunting. Before we start on the actual um, process of moving your QuickBooks desktop to QuickBooks Online, um, I just wanted to go over some benefits of moving your QuickBooks to the cloud. Um, by moving your QuickBooks to the cloud, your organization is preparing for the unexpected. I think we would all agree um, that if 2020 has taught us anything, it is to expect the unexpected. Um, if you um, unexpectedly have to start working from home for three months, um, having your QuickBooks on the cloud will really help your, at least your accounting department, continue unabated. Um, so it's a great way to make your accounting information safer, but also accessible from wherever you or your employees happen to be. It gives flexibility to valued employees and recruits. Um, Robert Half did a survey in 2018 that said that 86% of recruits um, are expecting some sort of remote work option um, as they enter the workforce. Um, and it's important for uh, your organization to be considering how you can give them that option if you want to get the best and brightest. And finally, your organization, by moving your QuickBooks to the cloud, is acknowledging that a remote option makes employees happier and more productive. And your current employees will really appreciate that. Harvard did a study in 2014 that showed that you know, despite prevailing op opinion that there are more, um, more distractions at home and that employees are less productive, um, remote work actually makes employees happier and therefore more productive. So, so three reasons for you to really um, strongly consider moving to the QuickBooks to the cloud that aren't even accounting related at all. All right, so QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Um, just a few things, we're not going to march through this table one, um, line by line, but QuickBooks Online has a major benefit that I think is often discounted when considering um, the move from desktop, and that, that, that's that the backup is automatic. For those of you guys who use desktop, you can easily back up your data, but it's something you, in, you're often prompted to do it, but you still have to do it um, manually, and, um, and, oops, sorry, let me go back. Um, you still have to do it manually, and in the off case that you forget to do that, um, you, you would just have to, you might wake up in the middle of the night and 
just remember it and hopefully nothing happens to your data that night, either to your computer or, you know, God forbid that something happens to your building and you can no longer access your computer, right? QuickBooks Online backs up automatically because it is in the cloud and you no longer have to worry about that issue. Um, QuickBooks Online, as we mentioned, is cloud-based, so you can access it from anywhere. Desktop, you can really only access on installed devices, although there are some cloud computing solutions that can allow you to log into your computer remotely. Those aren't nearly as reliable as um, Intuit's um, QuickBooks Online option. Uh, QuickBooks Online can be had for $75 a year for plus um, for, for QuickBooks Online Plus, which gives you five users, and $160 a year for advanced users. So this is for the nonprofit crew that is on here. Um, if you go to TechSoup, you can get these really low rates if you're a 501c3. Um, if you're a for-profit on this call, you would not be eligible for those low rates. And we'll go through some of the pricing here in a bit for um, those of you who are just going to have to go the traditional route. Um, and finally, the biggest, and I'm a huge proponent of this, as is YPTC, the biggest benefit for QuickBooks Online is the growing number of integrations with banks and payment processors, um, as well as payroll processors, reporting tools. Um, QuickBooks Online connects to a lot. And what that means for you and your accounting department is that a lot of time and effort can be saved in importing transactions and importing them accurately and efficiently. So um, we'll go through at the end of this um, some of the integrations, but there are over 650 apps that already work with QuickBooks Online and the number is growing every day. Um, QuickBooks Desktop does have some integrations, but um, they're really just not as full featured and there aren't nearly as many of them. Okay, so let's get into the meat of our presentation here. How to prepare for a conversion from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. First step to prepare is to prepare a list of employees needing access and the level of access needed by each. This is important for several reasons. Um, if you really need to restrict the rights of the employees um, that, you, that are, you're giving access to QuickBooks Online, you're gonna need likely the um, advanced version of QuickBooks Online because that allows you to customize access rights. Also, if you need more than five people to have access, that's also gonna push you towards the advanced because Plus only allows for five um, users. The next step is gonna be, you're gonna identify a master admin for that list of employees you prepare, prepared. Keep in mind that the master admin will be responsible for creating the company file in Q QBO and will have access to all parts of the company file. Also keep in mind, the master admin cannot be deleted until the master admin rights are reassigned. So if someone is a master admin and they happen to be leaving your organization, make sure you reassign those rights to another person in your organization because they can't, that their uh, user cannot be deleted until that is done. Determine which version of QuickBooks Online is needed. We'll go through this consideration a little bit more here in a bit, but um, overall, the two, two main things you want to consider right off the bat, how many users you're going to need. If it's less than five, QuickBooks Plus is a good option. If it's more than five, you'll need advanced. And then also the user rights is a big piece of it. If you really need to customize the user rights to assure segregation of duties, um, you will definitely want to look more towards that advanced option because of the customizable user rights. Um, you're going to prepare a list of customized reports created and regularly utilized from current QuickBooks desktop. This is because, sadly, these customized reports do not convert to QuickBooks Online. So you will lose access to these reports, um, and you'll want a list of them as well as their parameters so that you can recreate them in QuickBooks Online. You will prepare a list of memorized transactions utilized in current QuickBooks desktop. The good news here is that memorized transactions actually do convert to QuickBooks Online, but you want to make sure you have a complete list so that when you the conversion is complete, you can make sure that everything transferred over appropriately. All right. You're going to want to evaluate additional steps which may be needed to connect bank feeds and credit cards to QuickBooks Online. Um, really what we mean by this is if um, you're doing this conversion, you want to make sure that um, that you have access to the person who has those usernames and logins to make sure that you can set up those bank feeds because the access will not transfer over. You'll need to run and report, run and export to Excel, a trial balance, a statement of activities, 
profit and loss is what many people refer to. Uh, um, so, so keep in mind, sorry, um, this is the statement of activities is what a nonprofit for the for-profit people on here. Statement of activities is what nonprofits call um, their income statement and a statement of financial position is what nonprofits call their balance sheet. But it's the same issue if you're a for-profit as well, right? So um, you'll wanna, you'll, you'll want to ex export the income statement balance sheet through the date of the conversion so that when the conversion is complete, you can check your numbers and make sure everything came over appropriately. And then lastly, you'll want to run um, and print to PDF an audit trail report of the current fiscal year GL detail. This can help you immensely if there are issues with the conversion. And then not to mention that your auditors might request an audit trail and that does not transfer over. So you wanna make sure you have that on file. Okay, so I promised you we would kind of look through some of the differences and considerations between the various versions of QuickBooks Online. Again, we're not, we don't have time, unfortunately, to go through each of, the, each of these line by line, but you will get a copy of the slides and this is included in the slides. So you will be able to kind of use this to gauge which version is best for your organization. Um, but one thing, again, I just, and you'll hear me mention this time and time again, is that what you really want to consider here too is both the number of users, QuickBooks Plus has a maximum of five and Advanced has up to 25, right? But then Advanced is the only version that allows you to customize access by role. So you'll want to make sure that if you need that option, and many of you likely will, um, that you're considering that Advanced option um, before you purchase either through TechSoup or through the normal um, way, normal way through into it. <clears throat> also note that there's a sale on here that um, on my screenshot, I'm not clear on if that sale is ongoing, but they are often um, discounting um, memberships or subscriptions to QuickBooks Online. So if it's not discounted, you might just wait, a, if you can, um, wait a few weeks or a month or two and you will find it discounted. All right, so the, the steps to convert QuickBooks Online from QuickBooks Desktop. We'll go through each of these in detail, but we'll read through them quickly to kind of give you an overarching idea of the direction we're going. And then we will move on and I'll show you a little bit more about each step. First, you're gonna to wanna to purchase the version of QuickBooks Online you determined was best for your organization. Hopefully that previous table will help you um, with that determination. You'll set up the new QBO company file with all appropriate and accurate information. You'll want, want to make sure too that the QuickBooks online company file is set up by the ad, master admin. I'll remind you again about that later. If needed, you're going, going to want to clean up data or chart of accounts prior to conversion. Even if you miss something, you can always clean it up after the conversion is completed, but it's just easier to do it beforehand. You're going to ensure all bank reconciliations are up to date in QuickBooks desktop. You're going to ensure QuickBooks desktop updates are current. You'll back up the QuickBooks desktop company file. You will export the company file to QuickBooks Online. And then finally, you'll open QuickBooks Online to view the in imported company file and enjoy having your accounting department on the cloud. All right, so let's go into a little bit more detail on these steps. First, you're gonna purchase the version of QuickBooks Online you determine was best for your organization. Again, if you're a 501c3, make sure you go through TechSoup, you'll save hundreds of dollars a year. Um, the considerations, again, will be many and varied for your organizations, but definitely the number of users and the customizable access rights are two major considerations out there. Step two, you'll want to set up the new company file with all appropriate and accurate information. So this is what the setup looks like here. Um, and you'll want to make sure that the person um, going to the screen and setting up your QuickBooks Online account is your master admin. Um, and then another tip here for this, uh, this process, you wanna make sure your EIN is on hand because they will require that. So you'll set up your new QBO company file with all your appropriate and accurate information. And now comes the cleanup phase. So if needed, clean up your data or chart of accounts prior to conversion. I'll repeat that even if you don't do this, you can always do it afterwards, but it just makes it much, much easier to do this before the conversion. So what do we mean cleanup, right? If you have redundant accounts or classes, if you have several salary accounts or several class accounts that overlap, get rid of those or inactivate those accounts and classes 
so that you're not transferring over more data than is necessary. And this first bullet point is actually very important. Um, it asks, does your current chart of accounts include multiple AR accounts? So this is one important limitation of QuickBooks Online. You can have various AR accounts in QuickBooks Online, but when you're invoicing through QuickBooks Online, you can only invoice to one of those AR accounts. So functionally, you really only have one AR account in QuickBooks Online. You can journalize balances in and out of there, but, um, but functionally, you really only have that one AR account accessible in QuickBooks Online. So please make sure you're considering that when you're determining whether QuickBooks Online makes sense for you or when you're cleaning up your accounts prior to the conversion. All right, another very important point. Ensure all bank reconciliations are up to date in QuickBooks Desktop. So the bank reconciliation reports, which many of us are probably familiar with, but if you're not, these are the bank reconciliation reports that are automatically generated by QuickBooks Desktop after you finish reconciling the bank account every month or whatever period you reconcile. It's an accountant, I hope it's every month. Um, but these bank reconciliation reports from QuickBooks de Desktop do not transfer over to QuickBooks Online. So make sure you're printing those reports to paper or PDF. Um, the auditors are want them, you, you will want them for your reference. So make sure you have those printed to paper or PDF. However, even though the bank reconciliation reports do not transfer, the transactions do transfer as reconciled. So if they are marked as reconciled in QuickBooks Desktop, they will be marked as reconciled in QuickBooks Online once the conversion occurs. So that will make it a lot easier um, to ensure that all the reconciled transactions came over, you will still see them as reconciled in QuickBooks Online. All right, step five, we're almost there. Ensure QuickBooks desktop updates are current. So this is an easy one. You're gonna to wanna to click that help button in QuickBooks desktop and then click update QuickBooks. This is a very important step and you'll see why here when we get to step seven, but make sure you do that. If you have a very old version of QuickBooks, this might take a little while. So make sure you budget that time. Step six, back up the QuickBooks desktop company file. Most of us are familiar with this process. You'll go to that file button at the top left, backup company, and then create a local backup. The next screen will look like this. You'll wanna click local backup and then click next. You'll get a screen that says, um, you, you wanna choose, excuse me, when do you wanna save your backup copy? You wanna save it now, click next. And then you'll choose the location to save it. Right here, I'm showing um, kind of a, a local drive. So this would just be backed up on your computer's hard drive. I would also recommend creating a backup and uploading it to your cloud file storage solution, which most organizations and companies have these days, just so you have another one out there that is in a safe place um, in case something were to happen to your computer during the conversion process. All right, and then you'll click use this location again um, with the ad additional advice of hopefully um, backing it up to the cloud as well. Step seven, you're going to export the company file to QuickBooks Online. So I mentioned if you skip step five, um, you'll have an issue here because you'll click on company and then you won't see the option to export to QuickBooks Online. So if you're not seeing that option to export company file to QuickBooks Online, that means something happened in the update process and it didn't work. So you'll need to make sure you update your QuickBooks. So step seven continued, once you export, click that export company file to QuickBooks Online, you're gonna get screens that look like this. So first one's gonna say, let's take your business to the cloud, exciting, all right. Click get started, good news. You're, and this is actually where um, QuickBooks Online and Intuit will determine whether there's any issues with the file itself before the conversion. And then the last um, picture at the bottom says sign into QuickBooks Online. You'll, um, you'll want your master admin to be the one signing in and doing this conversion. So put in the master admin email and password. All right, and I'm gonna get on my soapbox here for a second because while I'm in front of you all, I would really like to mention this. <laughs> right here, what you're seeing is um, dual factor authentication. So it's asking, this master admin to not only enter their username and password, but also a code um, that is texted, it looks like in this case, to their cell phone. Um, dual factor authentication is extremely important, um, more now than ever, 
because what it requires is a hacker to get into your account. It would require them to have your username, your password, as well as physical access to your cell phone. Not that that situation could never happen, but it's extremely unlikely. So for your bank accounts, for your payroll information, for your donor management solution, wherever you can turn on dual factor authentication, it is preferred um, just because it really does secure your data. So I'll hop off my soapbox here for a second and, uh, and just leave it there. If you have the option for dual factor authentication, please use it. I will also add, sorry, one more thing. Um, it does make decommissioning employees who leave a little bit more complicated because you have to make sure that you, um, you're able to get back the access rights for whatever application they're using and that the codes are not being sent to their cell phone after they leave your organization or company. But dual factor authentication, definitely something to consider to secure your data. Once you enter the code, you wanna select your destination. So you're gonna choose the company in which to port your desktop file. So this is the company in QuickBooks Online. Most of you guys will only see one company option because most of you don't have multiple company files, at least I assume so. Um, keep in mind that this is the uh, QuickBooks company that the desktop data will be imported to. If you have information in there already, which you probably won't if you're just creating your first QuickBooks Online account, it will overwrite all existing data in the destination company. So make sure this is correct, right? So if you do have multiple companies, make sure you're not importing um, the data from the wrong desktop file to the wrong online company or it will overwrite all your data. So definitely one of the, these steps where you take a deep breath, make sure you read it over, maybe have someone else review, um, but this the, it will overwrite all data in the destination on QuickBooks Online. And then you'll get the screen, we're moving your data to the cloud. We're transferring your data now and it's done. We'll send a confirmation email with a summary report. Guys, this can take a little bit of time. So if it's taking some time, don't panic and run for the hills. Uh, just be patient. You can um, go for a jog or go eat lunch or something. Just check back in once in a while just to make sure that things are moving. Um, it can take a while, so don't panic. Uh, we will talk a little bit about some things, um, some troubleshooting options or some things that might go wrong, but most of the time this process goes just fine. All right, step eight, we're gonna open QuickBooks Online to view the imported company file. All right, so congratulations, your data is now available on QuickBooks Online, the, that beautiful comforting green check mark. So to get started, um, they give you um, several easy um, videos to watch and they're fairly short. I really recommend you watch them. Um, <clears throat> probably a good use of your six to seven minutes, um, just to make sure your introduction to QuickBooks Online is nice and smooth. All right, so I mentioned we would look at some potential issues and here they are. So some potential issues that can occur during conversion. So maybe you have an expired QuickBooks desktop license and that's why you're considering moving to QuickBooks Online or you have a very old version of QuickBooks. In this case, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we actually um, asked Intuit about this, so this is allowed. They have recommended that you go to their website and you download a newer version of QuickBooks Desktop and use a 30-day free trial to convert your old or expired desktop company file um, into a newer version so that you can complete the conversion. Um, this isn't circumventing any rules or anything. Intuit told us that this is the preferred method for doing this. So you can go to Intuit's website, download a new version, and use a 30-day free trial to convert. If you get a message that says the QuickBooks desktop host location is failing or is being exported from a bad VPN connection, um, maybe just try again later. The QuickBooks desktop host location def is failing is definitely one where you might just wanna try again in another hour or two. The bad VPN connection is most likely a question for your IT provider. Most uh, organizations use VPN for a reason, so I'm not gonna tell you to turn it off. Um, but you might want to call your IT provider just to make sure there's not anything that is corrupting the conversion process that relates with your VPN. Missing it, um, you'll notice when you go into QuickBooks Online that your attachments aren't there. That's because the attachments um, to journal entries, to other, <coughs> excuse me, to other um, files, they do not actually come over to QuickBooks Online. So it's something to consider. You'll have to manually bring them over. Um, so hopefully you haven't been using QuickBooks Desktop as a filing cabinet because that can make the conversion a bit tricky and a bit time consuming. 
you cannot easily merge two QuickBooks desktop company files into one QB, QBO company file. Um, it's going to be um, highly recommended that if you have multiple company files, um, that you keep them separate if you can. It's just going to make the conversion process easier. Um, you may notice missing budget numbers for accounts other than revenue and expense accounts. The good news is that the budget um, numbers for revenue and expense accounts do convert. Um, what doesn't convert is if you have budgets for balance sheet accounts, for example, or for CapEx, things like that. That's, those will not convert over. But your, um, your typical P&L revenue and expense account, um, accounts will convert over. Some people have reported issues reconciling credit card balances. I have not personally seen that, but it's just something to keep an eye on. Um, inactive customers, accounts, or vendors with open balances will all of a sudden become active during the conversion. Um, so one cleanup item that you might want to consider is if you have inactive customers in QuickBooks Desktop that have balances, though they may be inactive in QuickBooks Desktop, if they have a balance, they'll quickly become active in QuickBooks Online. So before you do the conversion, it would behoove you to go through your inactive customers and write off those balances before you do the conversion. Um, again, if it if you forget to do that particular step, don't worry. You can still um, the the customers will become active or the vendors, and then you can write off those balances in QuickBooks Online. But again, it just makes it easier uh, to do it beforehand. Journal entries marked billable are no longer billable, so this can be a pain if you're creating invoices or trying to bill things to clients that you your organization or company has paid for. So again, just something to consider if you use that option. And then finally, some payroll information does not convert. Um, things like pay types and employee personal information may not convert, so you'll want to check that as well. Okay, so the steps to complete after you have converted to QuickBooks Online. So we mentioned earlier um, that before the conversion, you want to run a trial balance, a statement of activities, or income statement for those of you who are in the for-profit realm and a statement of financial position balance sheet um, for those in the for-profit realm in QuickBooks Online, and then compare to those that you ran in the QuickBooks desktop balances. This is why we did this, just in case. So we wanna make sure all the line items line up, all the balances look the same. You'll need to enter the past payroll balances, the year-to-date payroll information, um, for example, for each employee, those will not convert over. And then finally, you want to confirm all the reconciled transactions in the check register have an R in the cleared column. As we mentioned, the bank reconciliation reports do not convert over, but the reconciled items will. So you should still see an R in all the items that you had previously reconciled in QuickBooks Desktop. Steps to more steps to complete after you've converted. All right, you're going to want to set up users and access to new um, to the new QuickBooks Online. Um, we'll have a screenshot here in a minute um, showing you kind of what that looks like for both the advanced and plus models. Um, if you're using QuickBooks Payroll, you'll want to fill out an interview in QuickBooks Online to complete that setup. For those of you using the jobs option, you'll want to confirm that any Q QuickBooks desktop jobs were properly converted to sub customers in QuickBooks Online. You want to review active in, in, and inactive account customer and vendor lists. As we mentioned, those with balances, those inactive customers or vendors with balances in QuickBooks Online will automatically become active in uh, QuickBooks Online after you've done the conversion. So you'll want to make sure you're combing through the active and inactive list to make sure you're catching all those. You want to connect the credit cards accounts and bank feeds that information does not come over and we have right there beware duplicates right you'll this is a moment where you'll want to take a little bit more time to check over the feeds just to make sure things um, aren't being duplicated if they are you can always just exclude them you're going to want to connect other apps as needed we'll talk a little bit about that more but again one of the main benefits of quickbooks online uh, is that it connects to so many apps and really decreases the amount of manual entry that your accounting department needs to um, partake in. Finally, customer and vendor contact fields will not convert. And by that, I mean only custom contact fields will not convert. Um, most of the customer and vendor app uh, information should come over, but the custom fields that are used in QuickBooks Desktop will not convert. 
All right. The steps to complete after you've converted to QuickBooks Online. So advanced QuickBooks Online user setup. So I mentioned before, um, probably three or four times already, but I want to you know ram this point home, is that QuickBooks Online Advanced is the only one that allows uh, a custom option to, to set up, um, excuse me, a custom role um, option so that you can um, make sure that all 25 users can only see um, what they need to see. Um, and this is really, really helpful um, in making sure that your segregation of duties are followed. Um, here you can see two custom roles that are already um, set up in QuickBooks Advanced. Um, the sales manager role, they can access sales transactions, customers, products, ser products and services, sales tax and currencies. And then the expense manager, they can access all expense transactions, vendors, products and services, sales tax and currencies. These two are um, set up automatically um, in, in QuickBooks Online. And then um, if you have other edits you wanna make for other users, you can do that as well. The QuickBooks Plus, uh, QuickBooks Online Plus user setup is much simpler. You have a standard user or a company admin. Do note though that at the bottom, the reports only and time tracking only um, options, those, uh, those don't actually even count towards your user limit. An example of where you might wanna give a reports only um, user option to someone is perhaps an auditor so that they can run their own reports or even better to maybe your treasurer um, so that uh, the treasurer of your board so that they can hop on at any time they won't mess anything up but they can run reports and check the information whenever they want wherever they are all right so reports, something to consider. Create customized reports from lists of reports regularly used in QuickBooks Desktop and save them. So remember those customized reports from QuickBooks Desktop sadly don't come over, but hopefully you followed our steps and created a list of them so that you can just simply recreate them in QuickBooks Online. Then enter memorized transactions from the list made prior to conversion. Again, those should convert over. But if they do not, you can make sure that, um, that all of them are there because you've already created a list for completion purposes and you know if any are missing. All right, this is my favorite part of um, QuickBooks Online, again, as I mentioned, is the number of applications that, that can connect with QuickBooks Online. I mean, you're seeing eight here, but as I mentioned, there are 650 of them out there. Um, I personally have, used probably 50 separate ones. Um, some of them are just excellent, especially if you're using um, a, a payment processor like PayPal, a Square, a Stripe. If you're getting lots of um, transactions that are coming through those, they're excellent. Like you see here, Sync with PayPal um, doesn't have a very high rating. Um, there are actually other third party um, applications out there that are excellent for PayPal Square. So even if the official app doesn't work, there are always other options out there. Um, payment processors, um, if AP um, expense management is out there as well. If you've ever used bill.com, it syncs really, really well with QuickBooks Online. Talks back and forth, an excellent option to outsource your AP department. And it works really well with QuickBooks Online. You have payroll providers like Gusto that work really well with QuickBooks Online. Um, and make sure that you can even map your QuickBooks Online accounts to your payroll providers and have those payroll entries sync over automatically, which is um, if you are, your organization's are accountant or you speak frequently with your organization's accountant, um, payroll entries can be a headache. So the fact that you can um, automate that process is no small deal. Um, we can answer questions here at the end about um, the integrations, but there are so many options out there for integrations that can make your accounting department's lives a lot easier. All right, some additional resources. We have YPTC.com. Um, we have several resources on QuickBooks Online. You can go to quickbooks.intuit.com or techsoup.org. All right, I finished a little early, but hopefully we have some questions here um, that we can, I see no open questions at the moment, but hopefully we can go through some questions here if you have, um, if you have any. Let me see. So 
Sorry about that. I was on the wrong Q and A thing. So I see some questions here. Okay. What are your thoughts about QuickBooks for Mac users? Um, so one thing I've noticed, um, I, I guess for me, um, using it on a Mac has not been significantly impacted. Um, I know a lot of people who use it on Mac. So it's really not a huge deal um, using it on Mac versus QuickBooks, especially QuickBooks Online. Um, I've not had any issues with it. It used to be that that was a problem, sort of like using Microsoft Office um, was an issue, but um, but now now I, I haven't had any issues or at least heard of any recently that that are that are major. The Mac versus Windows thing with QuickBooks has kind of been solved at least seemingly for the past few years in terms of QuickBooks Online. Any other questions out there? Um, I would say that the features that QuickBooks Online has that, um, that the desktop version does not um, primarily revolve around the integrations. And again, that's where you can save a lot of time um, and a lot of headaches by using those integra integrations appropriately. And if you need any help um, with um, putting those in, uh, integrations into place. Um, we can certainly help you do that, but that's where the time savings really come in. And one of the main benefits of QuickBooks Online are those integrations, those app integrations. They really are excellent. Okay, I'm seeing, I think, another one. Oh, here we go. For payroll, do we have to connect with our bank in advance to ensure they are aware of QuickBooks Online? Um, it depends probably on your bank, but I would. Um, just to make sure um, that nothing goes wrong with payroll, because we certainly don't want anything to go wrong with payroll. <laughs> um, so yes, I would say it would be it would behoove you to do that. But again, that's probably more on a bank to bank basis. I'm switching between chat boxes here, so give me one moment. Okay, I usually have to update my desktop um, QuickBooks three to four years. Do I have to update for the online version? And do you know roughly how much it will cost when I should do it? No, that is one of the main benefits of QuickBooks Online. You no longer have to worry about updates. Um, so that just happens automatically and there is no cost for it. Now, QuickBooks Online changes their model from time to time, so it, it could happen. Um, but um, as of now, that's not an issue. Any other questions? Another thing I'd really like to emphasize is that I will send um, Faustine um, the slides and then also the checklists to help you through this process. Um, and if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to um, contact YPTC or, and I'll also give Faustine my, um, my contact information as well. And I'd be happy to help out in, in any way I can with this conversion um, overall. This conversion really isn't that difficult for your organization. There are some pitfalls, but we went through most of those already. And as long as you're doing it um, in, you know, in a fashion and, with, and using those checklists where you're thinking through all of those pitfalls, I think it will be fine. And I really think it's going to help move your organization and company into the 21st century and really help you guys move, start moving your organization to the cloud. All right, well, that's all I have, Faustine. So um, if you wanna kind of wrap things up, I will pass it back to you. Yes, thank you so much, Dan, for taking time out of your busy day um, to help educate us about online QuickBooks and the conversion of that program. Um, if anyone has any other questions, please make sure to um, type them in the chat box 
or um, you can send me an email as well and I can um, definitely connect you with Dan so he can help answer those questions. I know QuickBooks is a program that you use online so it's kind of hard to navigate and understand it when he's talking at the same time. So um, please do not hesitate to reach out to him. He's a great resource. We actually work with Dan closely. So um, he's a great resource. He has a lot of answers to a lot of questions for QuickBooks. So um, thank you everyone for attending today. Um, please stay safe out there. And um, this webinar recording will be available on events.bbbcommunity.org and we will go ahead and send out the slides to everyone attending as well. Um, thank you everyone and please stay safe out there and have a great weekend.